your source for everything paranormal. Para-X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome once again to Stirring the Cauldron here on the Para-X Radio Network. Now, I'm just kind of chuckling because I'm reading some comments from chat because the opening music tonight was Christmas Overture by Midnight Syndicate, and that was from their album Christmas, A Ghostly Gathering. And the song sounded a little bit off and a little out of tune, and that's exactly what I wanted tonight because some people around this time of year... Um, get kind of out of tune and a bit off, and they're missing their loved ones around the holidays. And because of that, um, Echo Bodin is here with us tonight to kind of help sort things out and answer any questions you might have that go along with that empty chair syndrome that we hear about so often. Now, Echo is a psychic, medium, author of several wonderful books. She's also a teacher, a lecturer, and a whole lot more. She first discovered that she was born with psychic abilities and the gift of healing at the age of 17. And then she went on to teaching classes on psychic development and spiritual healing, which she learned from her guides and through prayer and meditation. Her work has been featured in many major newspapers, magazines, and she's appeared on several national TV shows, including The View and Beyond with James von Prague and NBC's Later Today. And she's also served as a consultant in the movie industry as well. So like I said, she lectures throughout the country on intuition, on spiritual healing, on life, death, life after death. And that's why I asked her to pop in tonight. The holidays are kind of a magical time, but it's also a time of nostalgia and remembering the good times with loved ones who aren't with us anymore. Well, at least not in the flesh. So I couldn't think of a better person to come on and talk about all this than Echo. And, and surprisingly and happily, she said yes, because she's always so busy. I, <laughs> I was really pleased. So Echo, welcome back. And thank you for joining me. It's been a really long time, actually. I mean, mostly it has. I was trying to remember, but <laughs> my memory just... <laughs> my, my, <too. laughs> my memory goes back that far. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's nice to be back. It's nice to be back with you. Nice. One of my favorite topics is talking about our loved ones on the other side. So this will be nice. 
It would be very yeah. nice to just hang out with you for an hour. Well, yeah, and, you know, the chat room, like I said, um, they can, if they have any questions and scratching their head about things going on there, um, they're more than welcome to, to ask. But I really thought it was important to talk about this time of year and how it affects people because nostalgia can be kind of a double-edged sword, both happy and sad. So mm-hmm. I think um, mm-hmm. a good place to begin is by talking a little bit about what goes on on the other side, maybe at this time of year also. Because, you know, we hear things like, um, well, once spirit crosses over, earthly matters aren't very important anymore. Or, you know, you know, they're just too busy doing other things to pay attention to the calendars that we have. So, mm-hmm. I mean, in your experience, how much attention do they pay to earthly matters once they've crossed over? And, you know, what, what, what's the holidays like over there if, if they choose to celebrate them? Yeah, um, they do choose to celebrate them on the other side. And that's not true um, once they cross over that they, they're no longer interested in Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, honey, really, I, you know, what I have found is that, oh, uh, when somebody wants to communicate with a deceased loved one who's been gone longer than 20 years, um, I've seen this place in heaven that they call, uh, inner heaven. And it seems like people that have been gone for 20 years or more, uh, live in that area of heaven. And, I mean, it's a huge area. Don't let me give you the impression it's this little teeny area because it's not. Mm-hmm. But that's the folks that I see uh, have let go of earth. Uh, they're not so tied to it anymore. Um, you know, those are the folks that don't know what day it is here on earth. And um, the other folks people up until around 20 years, they still check in with their loved ones. And, you know, Marla, I've also seen people at, when I've gone to family gatherings at Christmas time, not my family, but other families, Mm -hmm. um, I see their deceased loved ones there in the room with them, sitting at the table or milling around, just being with their loved ones. And so the people on the other side, they do enjoy earth time Mm -hmm. um you know they come they visit they like to visit when all of the family is together so it's not uncommon i know with my old boyfriend um whenever we would go to his family's for dinner his dad who had been deceased for quite a while he was always sitting at the table with everyone and Mm -hmm. it's it was interesting too because people would start talking about him and so you wonder you know okay are they are they tuning into the fact that he's actually here, which mm-hmm. none of them talked like, you know, is dad here, but they would suddenly just start talking about him and they wouldn't talk about him at say the other holidays. So mm-hmm. um, I think it could either be just the memories of that person or the person, that person's soul could actually be visiting and sitting at the table. Well, let me ask so, you yeah. this. We also hear, you know, that, different reports from different people, depending on your belief system, that mm-hmm. when we hear on the earth plane talk about an ancestor, a relative or something, that they actually do hear us, and that kind of draws them down. Um, yeah. Is you know, that- honey, it does, yeah, it doesn't always draw them down. Um, and yes, they do have lives on the other side. We, mm-hmm. you know, we can get very busy doing things over there and, um so, you know, people can hear their name being called or they can hear people talking about them, but uh, they don't necessarily come here, like, to answer or to find out what's being said. But, yeah, they can be tuned in. That's why a lot of times I say to people, um, you know, if you, if you want to talk to your mom, just don't say, hey, mom, because <laughs> how many millions of moms are in heaven? So <laughs> yeah. it's a good idea to... You know, to say their name and just say, hey, mom, you know, so-and-so, your name, um, I'm thinking about you. I hope you're doing good. I I wish you'd come and visit us sometime. And uh, they get the message. It's really sweet the way it works. I like Mm -hmm. that. 
you know, it's kind of the open channel, not not that we necessarily know that they do or, or you know, they respond to us, but at least it's good to know that they do. Yeah. Except, exactly. And especially, you know, there are people that, <laughs> you know, how people around the holidays get around the table and start talking about someone who's not with us anymore, but it was someone they didn't care for. Yeah. And so they'll sit there and they'll tell all these really bad stories about that person. So now we mm-hmm. know that that person is listening <laughs> on the other mm-hmm. side. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they could definitely be listening. Or, you know, maybe if they knew that that person didn't like them, they might just turn a deaf ear to the whole conversation. That would you know? probably be I safe. mean, they can do that. So they mm-hmm. can just go get themselves busy and forget about what's going on on Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. some of them need to hear it in a sense, you know, because know. that's the learning process. But, you know, people don't change your spots. If you don't like me here, you're not going to like me there probably. So, right. you know. Yeah, they're not quite as forgiving. You know, honey, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people think that um, when we die, we automatically become kind of angelic-like, and Mm -hmm. uh, that's just not the way it goes. Um, (laughs) We are on the other side the way we are on this side, and I know that's hard for some people to hear. You know, I just had somebody the other day ask me about that because... Her dad passed away, and he wasn't a very pleasant guy, and she's hoping that once he gets to heaven, he'll become a nice guy. Mm. And I said, well, you know, he (laughs) has to have a desire, first of all, to become a nice guy. He has to have a desire to change, and Mm -hmm. death doesn't just automatically make us a nice person. No. No. It doesn't, no. but, you know, we, we buy into the media, you know, angels with wings and harps and white no, fluffy clouds. I know, I know. Yeah, and, and so the, I'm sure that, that comes to play. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a question from the chat room. Um, okay. Cece wants to know, she says, you know, haunting reports increase this time of the year, just as, you know, like, is it just a thin veil, or this time of year, do they miss us and we miss them equally or is it just the longing that brings them back um how does well okay hauntings i mean that's different than visits from deceased loved ones so i'm not sure really because when she when i when i hear the word hauntings it makes me think of halloween and uh, you know they say they uh say that (laughs) the veil gets thinner. I don't know if that's really true. And I don't know if, you know, there seems to be more hauntings around the fall um, because we're focusing more on ghosts. Um, I mean, mm, you know, in my world, Mm -hmm. there's there's ghosts all the time. And so I don't see an increase in ghost activity around Halloween than any other, than mm-hmm. any other time, you know, right. um, and I don't see the veil getting thinner just at Halloween time. Mm-hmm. I think that the veil, and for people who don't know what the veil is, the veil right. really is simply just, um, it's like a, oh, it's, it's, what would you call it? A partition um, or, or a curtain? Yeah, or it's like something. that, yeah, yeah. Uh, between this dimension and the next dimension, and it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not this really thick thing that uh, that thins every once in a while. It's just, it, it, like you said, it's a partition mm-hmm. between our world and the other world. And, um, you know, we think a lot about ghosts around Halloween, and we like being scared, and, you know, TV always shows lots of scary movies, and so uh, we think that it seems like there's a lot more ghosts uh, and ghost activity, but really, it, at least in my line of work as a ghostbuster, we've always had just as many calls during springtime and winter as we do around fall. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I'm thinking that her question might mean something different. Would you read me the question again, honey? Yeah. Um, after we get through the veil part, um, she says, or, uh, is it just the thin veil or do they miss us or we miss them or just a longing that brings them back? Um, I think it's, I think it's all of it. Uh, a longing. Mm -hmm. Also they miss us 
and that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Um, that's another one of those misconceptions is that people think when we die, we just, you know, yippee skippy, we go on to heaven and we forget about our loved ones here. But mm -hmm. that's not that's not realistic. the The truth is that when a soul passes. Um, and they go on to the other side. Of course, they still miss the people here, and they miss their old life. And a soul can go through a grieving process also, just like we do. And, um, you know, if they, if they can handle coming back and visiting um, at holiday time, then they are allowed to come. But if the elders on the other side, uh, feel that, no, 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 it, you're still too emotional. It would be very hard for you to come come to earth, visit your loved ones, and then come back home. Um, so we think that you should stay here for now. And, you know, that's the thing, too, is they can observe us from the other side. And so mm -hmm. they can, um, I've actually seen, you know, you know, honey, it, when we watch uh, uh, medical shows on TV, you know, they always have that gallery where the other doctors are watching the surgeries uh -huh. take place. And I've seen a room on the other side very similar to that where they can sit in a room like that and then view their loved ones here on this side. Hmm. If, and, and that's for the folks who it might just be too soon for them to come back or hmm. it might be too emotional for them to come back. Now, see, that brings up a couple of questions or a couple of points in my mind um, because I always kind of thought that once somebody crossed over, they had the free will to come back and forth as they saw fit. Now, you're saying that perhaps the elders are keeping them in closer reign, you know, especially the newbies maybe. Yeah, the um, newbies. And, yeah, I didn't know that that you know, that they were looked after in that respect and kind of, you know, kind of, well, no, maybe it isn't time, maybe you're too emotional, like you said. I didn't yeah. know that they could suggest, I, I'm sure they can't make them stay back, but I'm sure they can suggest and, and strongly suggest that they don't for whatever reason. But yeah. I never I never gave that any thought. I just assumed that once you're there, you can, you know, have the free mm -hmm. will to come and go as you please. So that's that's kind of uh -huh. interesting. Thank yeah, you no, we that. don't, honey. And, you know, sometimes there, I mean, I've seen souls that they really want to come here and visit. Uh, but, you know, like the elders will feel like, oh, no, 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 you're way too vulnerable. And mm -hmm. you might get stuck there. Uh, you could easily mm -hmm. become earthbound because you miss your family so much. And so mm -hmm. we're going to suggest that you stay here for mm -hmm. a while. And then we'll let you know when it seems like it's a safe venture for you to go out on mm -hmm. yeah they're yeah. very protective of us um, because they know you know when we're first over there uh, we're really torn we it, it's nice not to be in physical pain anymore it's nice to um, I don't know just I mean heaven is such a beautiful place and so you know Gosh, we look out and we're just, you know, most souls feel really grateful um, that the death occurred so that they can now relax and not be in physical pain anymore. But there's also mm -hmm. just as many souls who are sad that they're, they're deceased and they've left their loved ones and mm -hmm. here comes Christmas, you know, this kind of thing. Um, and those are the ones that the elders will watch out for and just, you know, suggest, no, 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 no. You know what? Um, how about if you watch your family from here and um, you can send loving thoughts and you can receive their loving thoughts, uh, but we think it's wise, wisest if you just stay here on this side. Mm -hmm. And they do it again out of love and, and wanting to protect us. Now, who exactly are the elders? Clear the, clearly, they're probably not human spirits, right? You know, honey, they were. They are souls okay. who have been to Earth. Oh, they've, okay. Yeah, they've finished their incarnations, and so they don't have to keep coming back. But okay. they have. They are souls who have uh, a, a very deep understanding of what it's like to be human and then go back over to the other side and then go back again and come back and go back and... Um, yeah, they've gone through the whole realm of of schooling, I guess mm -hmm. we'll call it, uh, and they're just they've just 
got amazing wisdom and compassion. Compassion is a big one with yeah. the elders. Yeah, a lot it would, of passion. It would have yeah. to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. Um, all right. Let's let's take one more hierarchy step on this. Who is above the elders? The angels are above okay. the elders. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I like the hierarchy, and it just you know it plays up. All right, can we go one step above the angels? Uh huh. Oh yeah, honey. Um, there's an uh even the highest level, and that's where, at least what I've seen is that um there's okay there's seven levels on the other side, and the highest level is what we would all consider to be nirvana. Or it's just. It's just amazing there. And what's cool about that, the highest level, is that we, we ha- all the souls there on that level have gone through all the schooling that they can, and, and they have a complete understanding of uh, <clears throat> their oneness with God, their oneness with each other, and, and yet they remain, uh, let's see, I want to say this correctly. The, their individuality still remains, mm-hmm. but they are, oh, God, they're, they're a part of the bigger, bigger, bigger picture. And um, that's what we're all striving for is to be in that place. It's just a really beautiful place. And mm-hmm. uh, all of our souls are striving to get there. And time doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, because time there is different than here. So in in its own due time, it happens, right? I mean, going up to, to up the that's levels. right, honey. Yeah, that's right. Okay, it's an easier yep. way to say it. Yep. All right, now um, we're talking about um, being able to um, call them or have them with us at at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. or at Christmas or whatever. Now, in the pagan world, and I'm guessing in other cultures as well, there's one tradition that's followed, and it's called a dumb supper or a silent supper. And what it is, it's a very ancient tradition where those who have passed attend the living for a night of kind of communication and communion. And it's sort of an open invitation for the living and the spirits to dine together. And what is done is we set a chair at the head of the table, Okay. And some people shroud it with black fabric to represent a spirit chair, but you know most people know the empty chair is what it is, right. and it's usually given. It's a given that the empty chair is the place of honor, that the invisible guests or guests are the guests of honor, and then a place okay. setting is set down for the spirit with a candle in the center of the plate, and the names of the invited spirits are written down and placed under the plate, um, but it's kind of welcome for any weary travelers that want to stop by, you know, those that are passing through and kind of pick it up, that there's something there. Um, And then when the food is served, that place always gets served first. And from there, people have different ways of conducting the dinner. I mean, uh, for example, some people begin by pouring a libation into a cup at the head of the table where the spirit chair is, and they all call a loved one, you know, with a prayer. Um, others say a prayer of thanks at the end of the dinner. Some people choose to eat in silence. Others, you know, can talk to their loved ones and share memories um, during dinner. It's just not a dinner to grumble and gripe about and be a sour mood, you know, like, uh, you know, you had a flat tire today or something like that. It's just, it's kind of a very sweet place. Um, and that that is a tradition that I've always thought was really kind of wonderful, Um Usually the host of the dinner sits in the chair opposite the um, the guest of honor's chair. And, um, you know, the prayers at the end and, and the, the, just the camaraderie and everything from everybody at the table, um, it, it's really a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, very spiritual, I think. Um, and, really you know, nice. you, you never know, and, and especially with somebody who can – actually, you know, feel spirit there or see spirit there, um, you know, that makes it so much better because you can have somebody saying, well, you know, so-and-so is sitting there or so-and-so, you know, you pick it up. But even if everybody can't see, we just, you kind of feel the love. That's yep. that's kind of, kind of the way it goes. Yep. Um, and say, talking about love, you know, it, I mean, it's said that love never dies. 
But while there are those who stay on the other side for a long time, others choose a quick turnaround and reincarnate quickly. Um, And in thinking about that, I began to wonder about reincarnation and how quickly some souls can come back. Um, You know, I mean, although I think a premature reentry probably isn't a good idea, and that's where maybe the elders are going to step in. But, um, you know, we're supposed to study and learn between lives. But any thoughts on, on... the reincarnation process and quick and you know whatever yes yes i i do have some thoughts on that and that you know what i've learned what i've been taught is that there they recommend 60 life um 60 let's see i want to say this better 60 earth years Mm -hmm. in between lives okay they recommend that but Mm -hmm. There are souls that can come right back, um, and I'm not sure. Um, gosh, oh, Marla, I should tell you this this interesting story. This do do. Lady came to me uh, many years ago. She wanted to know who who her baby was, and um, okay, so and she didn't tell me anything about anything. So okay, so I closed my eyes and. And the voice says to me, um, the baby is her husband. And um, I thought, uh-oh, am I, am I hearing this correctly? The baby <laughs> is her husband. Um, so I asked again, okay, come on, you guys, help me. i got to be clear about this. Oh, nope, the baby is her husband. Oh, man. Okay. So, um, so I said to her, well, it sounds like your baby is your husband. And... She said, oh, my God, I just knew it. And so then she told me the story that her husband, uh, he was in the hospital, he had cancer, and he called her one night and said, come to the hospital, I want to make love to you before I die. And she said, you know, you haven't been able to do that for a really long time. And he said, well, I can tonight. And he said, and I've asked the nurses to give us alone time. So she went to the hospital. And she said they made love, and um, and he died. I think it was the next day, and three months later she found out she was pregnant. Okay, so she gives birth to this little boy nine months later, mm. and she said he not only looks just like my husband, but he has all of his mannerisms. And she said, and every day I look at this, baby and I think I know you're my husband (laughs) Um, okay so in that case uh, you know I I talked to his soul and his soul said yes he still wanted to be with her and um, he still had a lot to learn and he did learn a lot from having the cancer but he asked permission to be born back into this family and it was granted it's like oh my gosh and um and so she gave birth to her husband. <laughs> so in that case, you know, um, and then I saw recently, I saw um, an image of a little boy that was uh, kidnapped. And, you know, it was so interesting because after he was kidnapped, uh, a lot of us here in Minnesota were trying to find this boy and a lot of psychics and uh I could never find his soul. I was because I'd I'd go to the other side. I'd project over there. I go, okay, is he here? Nope, he's not here. And I thought, okay, he must be alive. And a lot of us felt like he must be alive, but none of us could find where he was. Okay. Well, then it came out in the news that his he had died. That his kidnapper had killed him and buried him the very same day. And so I thought, okay, now what? Why? Why couldn't I find his soul? Why? Why? Where? Where was he? And they showed me an image that the same day that his physical body was being buried, his soul went into the body of a baby. And they said that um, he was allowed to be born right away again. Because he had chosen to be the kidnapped 
child so that uh, because his mother was um, really significant in um, uh, in later or as years passed, she was very significant in uh, creating the Amber Alert and uh, creating, you know, um, oh, God, I don't know what they're called, but, but um, missing and abducted children. You know, she started this whole thing. And so he chose to be that child that would be kidnapped, but he was also given permission to be born right away again. So I thought that was really interesting too. Yeah. Because again, what they say is, and Edgar Casey said this too, that it's recommended that there's 60 years in between lives just because then the soul can rest, and um, and then when it's born again, it's not confused about its identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and okay. Another interesting point. I guess I keep going off subject, but it's fascinating when people come back. Um, some people will have no recognition. Of anything that happened before. Well, other souls will. They'll get yep. here and they'll know that they've been here before. Now, mm-hmm. is there a difference between a young soul and an old soul? Or, you know, exactly. why Why are some kind of, you know... Yeah, honey, un- that's what it is. Is Young and old soul. Yeah, young and old souls. And older souls. Oh, gosh. I mean, older souls, they've been, you know, think about it. They've been here one, two hundred lifetimes. And so... There's a real sense of, I've been here before. I mean, they can tell you different places uh, that they've been. They can describe different places, whereas a younger soul who hasn't been here very mm-hmm. often, mm-hmm. Um, there's just there's no sense of being connected to this place at all. So yeah. it is about being a younger soul or an older soul. Now, that brings up another point, which is, you know, some psychics say, Edgar Casey said, we were all created at the same time, 10 mm-hmm. billion years ago, I think he said, mm-hmm. um, all of our souls. Okay, and that there aren't any new souls being created. Well, as much as I don't want to uh, go against what Mr. Casey says, mm-hmm. um, I do, I, my guides have said that, yes, there are new souls that are continuing to be created, and what they say is that God is such a creative, um, oh God, such a creative energy, it's like God almost can't help but continue to create more and more souls, and so that's where we get younger souls. Mm. And, and okay, so there's a lot of people like you, um, I have certain abilities, other people have, you know, similar abilities um so are we the ones that are the older souls yeah honey um what what i've been taught is that um spiritual spiritual people older souls um they will come back into their life and they might start out in a religion but they move away from religion and move into spirituality Mm-hmm. And that that's what I've learned from my guides is that that's um, the sign of an older soul is when they they walk away from religion. I mean, they take from it what is helpful for them to learn and to grow and to heal, but they move mm-hmm. away from religion and move into spirituality. Mm. That's funny because I saw a banner, and I might have mentioned this before, but... It said that spirituality comes from the soul, um, religion comes from the mind. Oh, that interesting. Okay. Kind of made, yeah, kind of made yeah. sense a little bit, but mm-hmm. yeah, and and then there's that that fine line. You don't ha- you don't have to give up one for the other. You can be both as well. I mean, you know. That's so, right. You know, exactly. But, yeah, yeah, but I I I just I I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but I can always kind of tell a younger soul from an older one. Um, no, you're not crazy, honey. You're not yeah. crazy. You know, I can feel them too. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's so interesting with younger souls because they just, they don't have a depth to them that an older soul has developed. Mm -hmm. That's just because of having so many lifetimes. 
Yeah, so, so they keep growing um, up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just the whole the whole process is so amazing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it it's I mean, there's so many layers to it. We could talk for you know six hours about this and not even scratch the surface. Yeah, but um, is it is it easier for us? We were talking about the veil a little while ago. Is it yeah. easier for us? to cross the veil to them or is it easier for them to come here i mean i mean it, it's a process of kind of meeting an astral plane right right um, yep but- you know <clears throat> like when we have dreams at night of our loved ones our deceased loved ones and mm-hmm. and we wake up in the morning and we go wow that that really seemed real okay mm-hmm. <laughs> okay that's where we do meet in the middle you know mm-hmm. between they come halfway here we meet the other we go the other way halfway Mm -hmm. there and um that's where a lot of these interactions and these experiences happen is in that astral plane um and i think it's easier for all of us to do it that way instead of Mm -hmm. us going all the way to heaven but we can you know at night when our body is uh sleeping and our soul is traveling we can go the other side and we can visit our loved ones um Mm -hmm. And they can come here and visit us. So it isn't like hard for either of us to go to one place or the other. But Mm -hmm. I think that I would guess for all souls, it would just be easier if everybody kind of met in the middle, you know? Yeah, it would. But, you know, when we're in that dream state now, I I remember you talking about... um, and this might be a sad subject for the holidays, but you were talking about before your mom passed, and yep. you went you went across with her to kind mm-hmm. of take her there and show her there and and you know whatever. So so you've been there um, willingly. Now I, on the other hand, and I've told this before, and I'll tell it really quick. I had an elderly cousin who one night I dreamt that she and I were walking in the clouds, and we came ac- across her husband who had passed Mm -hmm. like two years before. Mm -hmm. And nothing was said. We walked towards him, and I took her hand, and I put it in his. Mm. And then I woke up. And then, <laughs> and the next mm-hmm. morning, and I thought about. I thought, what the heck was that? You know, I didn't try to oh. go anywhere, do anything. It just came. It just happened. And I thought, boy, that was some dream. Now it was a dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a dream. You know, you you vacillate. <laughs> and then um, I got to work, and a couple of hours later, the phone rang there, and it was her nephew. And he, I said, she passed, didn't she? Wow. He says, How do you know? <laughs> and, and, oh. and, you know, when he said, How do you know? I, I was afraid to say. And I, but I said, um, I, I kind of took her there, <laughs> you know, or something. I mean, it was just, you know. Good for you. No, what do you God, saying? most people wouldn't say that. Good no, for he, you. He was an open minded guy. I didn't think he was going to have me oh, good. or anything. <laughs> but yeah, but good. I mean, you know, but. So when you took your mother across, it was purposefully. You know, you you set out to do it and you went. Right. Me, I just ended up there, you know, and it was like, huh? <laughs> you know, so and I've heard that from people that want to cross the astral plane. They want to get to the astral plane and, you know, you read all these things about how to do it and how to meditate and how to, and, you know, you feel the vibration, all this stuff. Yeah. But, most people say they can't do it. Um, and then, you know, it, 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 I don't think there's a trick to it, but I've, I've tried on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't work. You know, maybe I didn't try hard enough. Maybe I didn't do it right. But I, I would sit there and think, okay, no, this is where I'm going. Let's see who I see. You know, I'm going to recognize somebody. You know, never, never get off the launch pad. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the way to put it. Yeah, I um, get it. Yeah. Um, you know, there... I'm sure you've heard of the Monroe Institute, mm-hmm. right? Have you, honey? It's where is it? Over in Virginia, I think. Um, and and they teach people how to consciously astral project. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I I think what it is. I mean, you know, I okay. So I, I'm trying to think right now. You know what did? Well, you know. I think all the times that I've astral projected, um, 
it's probably second I, nature to you, so you probably don't even think about it, right? Yeah, you're right, honey. I don't, I don't think of this. Boy, I can't remember. I, um, I do remember one time I, um, I wanted to visit a friend of mine who was in prison, and um, I just wanted to check and see how he was doing. And I laid down on my couch, and I just. Uh, I said to my soul, I really, really want to go see so-and-so. And uh, and my body fell asleep, but there I was in the prison, and I was walking behind him, observing him, and I mm-hmm. saw that he had this big um, egg, like, like he had gotten into a fight with somebody and had this big... Mm-hmm. Big yeah, egg goose on egg on his head. head, yeah, or whatever, yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a bummer! And um, I wonder what happened. And then I, I was thinking, okay, am I imagining this? And then the next thing I knew, I my body woke up, and I felt really sad because mm-hmm. I had seen him, and I thought, oh, he just looked so sad. And then, um, let's see, I can't remember if I talked to him on the phone. But I asked him, I said, do you have a big noggin on your head? And he said, yeah, how do you know that? And I said, oh, I, oh, I had a dream. And so, I mean, I wasn't <laughs> going to say I even visited. But uh, he said, yeah, that he had gotten into a fight with somebody and he had this big noggin on his head. And, uh, but what was interesting was that when I woke up, I felt really sad. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't want to do this astral projection stuff because I always feel sad when I wake up and um, but it has continued I mean I've continued to to have it happen and really all I do is I just lay down and I say to my soul I would really like to go visit so and so Mm -hmm. and um, and then my body falls asleep but then my whole consciousness is I'm a soul and I'm just standing in somebody's living room you know, looking at them or I'm someplace else and then the next thing I know, poof, my body wakes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. And I think it's important. Some people may not know what we're talking about with astral travel, um, (laughs) but it's not only that we go to heaven. I mean, we it's possible to, like you did, you just popped over to jail. And the same thing kind of happens if I do Reiki healing on somebody distant. Um, Okay. I can, you know, I kind of try to focus in on them, and I'll often see that, you know, yeah. I, I kind of know what the basic thing is, because if you're doing healing, it's like, okay, what hurts? You know, what do you need to be healed for? But yeah. then um, it, it goes one step farther, and, and somebody with a bad back um, mm-hmm. will say, well, I have a bad back, and this and that, and I will concentrate on it, and I'll see lightning right at a certain spot in the back kind of thing. I mean, I think they they give us what we, we understand, you know, in our own language. So I yep. get the simple things. Okay, there's a backache. You know, it feels like a jabbing pain. Okay, it's lightning. Or, you know, I'll see something like a, a, a big red flash, flashing thing on a certain body part. You know, that's where it hurts kind of thing. So okay. I guess that in a way, and I didn't think about this until we were just talking about it, but that in a way is kind of astral yep i agree yeah. with you i never yeah you know what marla my teacher told me a long time ago um she said echo you do more healing work in your sleep than you do in your physical body and she said and it's because your soul can go and reach so many people at night and you're limited by your physical body so marla i'm sure that's what you're doing mm-hmm. well you're just, I, you know. you're just out there doing healing work at night, and, and my teacher said to me, Echo, don't get upset with yourself, because I do, I sleep nine hours a night, and she mm-hmm. said, uh, you're doing way more healing work in your sleep. Don't get upset mm-hmm. with yourself. It's just mm-hmm. the way that it is. And, and Marla, I've had, I've actually had uh, letters or emails from people saying, uh, last night I sat on the side of my bed, and I said, out loud, Echo Bodine, if you could come and, and channel a healing to me tonight because I'm in so much pain and mm-hmm. and I woke up this morning and I have no more pain. Or mm-hmm. um, I've had people say they woke up in the middle of the night and they saw me standing over them channeling mm-hmm. healing. 
Now, I'm not conscious of any of this stuff, but I bet you, I bet you that's what you're doing. Well, I'm doing it not just to sleep. I'm, I'm doing it awake. I mean, I'll be, I'll just sit here and kind of go into a meditation and do it. Yep, I get it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it probably I'm, I'm doing double duty then, you know, <laughs> sleep and awake exactly. or, or whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really kind of interesting because people say, well, if you go to astral, you're only going to meet your loved ones. Well, you can, but that's not the only people you can meet, <laughs> you know, I mean, so it, yeah. Just that's right, honey. Oh, my God. Explaining. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, another question, um, you know, we hear that we're talking about sadness on the holidays. We hear that when we grieve long and hard for someone, we interfere with them being able to move on and they remain earthbound. Now, how true might that be? Oh, you know, um, it's really up to the person, uh, the soul that's died. Uh, now, if they're feeling really bad um, and like, oh my God, look at all the sadness I've caused this person. I better stay here with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, then they can remain earthbound. But I've also seen the elders intervene with some people when um, they die and their family is just really distraught. And I've seen the elders come in and just whisk that person back to the other side, like, oh, no. (laughs) Okay, good. Oh, no, we know you, and you're going to get stuck in this, and oh, no, come on, you're coming with us, and off they go to the other side. So it just depends, you know, sometimes, okay, it's kind of like if a soul needs to learn how to let go of uh, their loved ones, you know, if, if, God, I mean, how am I trying to say this? Um, (laughs) It's like if a soul is uh, real codependent and they feel like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly do this to my family. I couldn't possibly leave them. I better stay here and take care of them. Uh, then they can remain earthbound. Mm-hmm. And then there's other souls, like I said, who just get whisked, whisked away yeah. so that they don't stay stuck and mm-hmm. stay earthbound thinking that they should be here for their loved ones. So mm-hmm. It's really about the soul's growth, what they need, and um, and what the elders think is best for the for the soul that died. But yeah, I've seen you know I've seen some souls that are really tortured souls because they they feel like they need to stay here and take care of their loved one because their loved one is so distraught, and it's yeah. really sad, you know that it's like oh my gosh, you guys. Um, no, you don't have to do this, but they feel like, no, they can't go on. Oh, you know what? You know what, Marla, here's a really good example. When, when, when the Columbine kids, mm-hmm. when that happened, I don't even remember how many years ago now, yeah. but yeah. those Columbine kids left or died, I checked in with their soul that day, and um, it was really uh, a really cool experience. I was I was down in Arkansas doing a, um, a workshop, and I just went off to my cabin, and I just sat down, and I, I, I tuned into each soul. And it was really cool. Um, mm. um, but there was one boy who, ah, I felt so bad for him because I could hear him. Okay, it was really cool because I saw his grandfather, who was on the other side. I, I saw his grandfather come here. And he said, um, come on, I'm going to take you over to the other side. And the boy said to his grandpa, he said, no, I can't go. He said, my mother is going to be suicidal now that I've died. I'm her whole world. And he Mm -hmm. said, I need to be with my mother. And he said, I'll come over when I feel like she'll be okay. And um, so I, I saw him sitting there with her and... She was just, you know, she was totally beside herself. Okay, so like three months later, I checked in. He was still there. Uh, Six months later, I checked in. He was still sitting there with her. And uh, she was still in as much pain nine months later than she was that, as she was that first day. Well, then it came out on the news that a year after the accident, one of the mothers of the kid kids uh, committed suicide and I knew right away that it was her Mm -hmm. 
And I checked in, and yes, it was her, and he took her over to the other side. Wow. But I mean, that kid, he was so, he felt so bad for her, and he felt so responsible for her that he just sat there with her every day. Well, that's love, you know, and and sometimes you can't, you can't, make somebody do something they don't want to do. I mean, there are, I know that there are spirits who initially, some of them are afraid to pass mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. they're, you know, like maybe they think they've been sinned, they're going to go to hell. You know, I mean, there's a lot of reasons yep. why spirits might stay on the right. earth plane um, out of fear, but I think eventually that kind of gets worked out too, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep, it does. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. kind of, it's just... It's just so interesting about people because, again, you think, you know, okay, well, I've just passed and I'm going to grow the wings. I'm flying up to the pearly gate. St. Peter's going to let me in and yep. I'm going to see all my loved ones. And that that also doesn't always happen. You don't, you know, run up there and I want to see my mother, my great-grandmother. You, you don't always. They may be off doing something else. Right, um, honey. You know, so <laughs> I'm <laughs> – go ahead. You know, Marie, the thing is that's cool, though, is that – like, let's say, you know, you or I, one of us is going to die tonight. Okay. They, all the souls that know us on the other side, they're going to be told that, hey, Echo is uh, dying on November 30th. And, oh, okay, so everybody, I mean, I see more family reunions at the time that the person dies and they're all on the other side they're just waiting there's this big reunion oh my god everybody's so happy to see each other um that is more often the case is that all the loved ones on the other side are alerted that that person is going to be dying that day and so they're all there to greet them and some of them are standing in the tunnel and they're greeting they greet them that way others Mm -hmm. are in the hospital room or in the hospice mm-hmm. place, um, and they're there to take them on to the other side. It's just so different mm-hmm. for everybody because, you know, yeah. some people, they've been drugged out for weeks, yeah. and now their body finally gives in, gives out, mm-hmm. and uh, the soul finally comes out of the body, and they're just exhausted. They've used all their mm-hmm. energy to fight the dying process, Right. And so that soul is very, very weary, and mm-hmm. maybe a loved one, probably a loved one, has come from the other side to take them home. Then mm-hmm. other folks, you know, they die, boom. They, the, even before the car accident or whatever, the soul mm-hmm. comes out of the body. Yeah. Yippee, skippy, I'm going home. You know, they're just, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's about the, the age of the soul is mm-hmm. if the soul uh, is familiar with death, it's just mm-hmm. going to pop out and go right back, go over to that light, whereas mm-hmm. a younger soul might kind of linger and not really know what to do. And right. it's just so different with everybody. I know. And you know what? We're going to have to do this again because there's just so many questions that keep popping up when, you know, we talk about one thing and 10 questions pop up. <laughs> so we really need to do this again sooner than later. But yes. in the meantime, because time is really short, I want to um, give you a chance to tell everybody where they can get a hold of you, your website and all that. And then I want you to talk about your your weekly Facebook live chats these days. Okay, sweetie. Um, thank you for reminding me to do that. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to tell people that I wrote a book called What Happens When We Die, and it's... It's been, a lot of people have said it's really helped them or a loved one through the dying process. So if you, uh, one of the listeners, or if someone in your family is going through a dying process right now, uh, I would highly recommend getting the book because it will help a lot. Um, right now on my Facebook pages, I have three Facebook pages. One is, called, one is Echo Lee Bodine, the other one is Echo Bodine, and then the other one is the Center for Intuitive Living. And I've been doing these uh, kind of weekly live posts. Just, you know, my intuition will say, okay, let's do one on fear. A couple weeks ago we did one on suicide. The other day we did one on sexual harassment. And then yesterday, I think it was yesterday yeah. or Tuesday, I did one on the holidays and just how mm-hmm. to, you know, get through them. 
And yeah. they're very helpful. People say that they're very helpful. I keep them down to about two minutes. And it's just friendly little suggestions uh, for people so that, oh, I just don't want people to feel alone or like, you know, there's nobody out there that understands them. And so that's why I do these little posts, just to connect with other people. And people so don't have to check see it your out. life. Yeah. Um, say, go your, ahead, honey. I was I'm just going to say they don't have to be there live to do it because you're posting them. So right. if they, they find you on Facebook, they can go back and listen to all of them. Um, they don't. Mm-hmm. They don't run away very quickly. I just wanted people to know that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There's one on intuition. There's one on psychic development. I mean, psychic abilities. Uh, one on fear. Wow, that one was huge. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, hits on that one. And then the one I think that's gotten the most hits is the one I did about a month ago on suicide. That's gotten about 5,500 hits. And uh, whew, lots of people thinking about suicide these days so well you're doing the right thing and you're doing it well because people listen to you you. people respect you and um give us your website address in case people want to go looking at your website and find you it's uh echobodine.com it's really simple i try to keep (laughs) everything really simple and uh if uh, another book i wrote called uh look for the good and you'll find god there's um uh, a whole row of pictures that go along with that book. And so if you are someone who has read that book or are interested in reading it, look for the good and you'll find God. And then uh, you'll see when you go on the website, um, there's a little button called more, and it'll tell you where the pictures are. Each chapter has a picture that goes along with the story. And nice. uh, uh, they're pretty cool pictures. So. So that's Great. it. That's it. And we are out of time. So thank you. Thank you so much. And again, we're going to do this again because okay. yeah, it's a never-ending subject and we just really need to talk about it. Yeah, and, I mean, we, do. Uh, we do. And so thank yeah. you. And I want to thank everybody for listening in. And I want to thank everybody in advance who's going to hear the podcast. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at this same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2014. Moonlight Hall by Kevin McLeod. Licensed through Incompetech.com.